Welcome again, uh, check in with a new episode here. We're gonna make an interview in this amazing Berlin summer day. By my side, uh, Florian Cruz. Florian, how are you? I'm good, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here, so thank you so much. Thanks for coming, man. My pleasure. Luck. It's super cool. It's a super cool day, of course. Uh, it's um, warm and cozy, nice. So, uh, I want to ask you something. Um, because you're been working with, you make different collaborations, right? With Nuremberg. Um, how is it for you just to work not on the solo side and to do all these kind of things? It's like I also work on the solo side, of course. Yeah. But yeah. I love to collaborate with other people. Yeah, because you have these things with Nuremberg. Also, you have a, a word tapper with Celis Vasilodos. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. now you have the, the, the live set with uh, Hendrik uh, Burkhardt. Yeah. So you have a tendency over there, right? Yeah, that's true. Because, you know, I like if people come together and share their ideas of music. And when I have an idea of yeah, what I think could be a good track, and there's someone who could make it even better, you know? Like in the case with Hendrik Burkhardt, he has such a great voice. And um, I really love the way he writes his lyrics and stuff. It has a deeper meaning all the time. So it gives the track another level, you know? So it opens it opens it up. So yeah, that's why I love to collaborate. It's also with the Cruiser Nuremberg thing was the same, or is the same still, um, that we complement each other on the music. But sometimes it's nice to just, yeah, be myself in the studio and just do my own stuff, just solo. It's also nice. Do you think that the, the times that you produce by yourself, it changed the way that you produce that when you do these collaborations? Oh, that's a good question, actually. I think every single project has its own sound. Like, for example, with Stelios Vasiludis on the wiretap thing from, I don't know, 2008, I think we started. Um, it was a special sound, and when you listen to it today, it's a bit more on the progressive side, I would say, yeah. like bedrock style. Yeah, because you released on bedrock. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, I think that's something Stelios was bringing into yeah. in, into the collaboration, and yeah. Those tracks you can play today because they're up to date now, I think. And yeah. So, do you believe on the impermanence of the tracks? Because we were talking about this uh, on the other side of the camera that sometimes you have artists that are super trendy, yeah. but at the end of the night, it's okay, it was nice, you cannot say it was not, yeah. but it's not gonna keep in your head. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Of course, you need to be special out there, especially nowadays where everyone is able to do music with a low budget, you know, you can just buy a good sound card and maybe some some plugins and you can do great music. Um, time has changed, of course, that you don't need a big studio anymore. So it's getting even harder out there to, to, to be special. And there are so many DJs doing, or producers doing great tech house tracks, for example, which are easy to play, but hard to remember because they sound very similar. And yeah, I think what I do with Hendrik, for example, or what I do with Niels, it's a bit more on the emotional side, you know, like some more melodies and stuff. And I just hope I'm sending home people with the music and they, they are remembering the track when they wake up the day after a long night out. That is... This is going to be my first controversial question. That I agree with what you say, but on the other hand, you, with Kursa Nuremberg, you make some sandbanks for people. So, okay. so people are using your your progressions or the things that you do on the studio on their own productions. Yeah. Do you feel that you are helping to all this trend? To how can I rephrase it? It's easier for people yeah. to make tracks with your samples. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. That's why we decided to do beat samples only. You know, it's um, it's there are no melodies on the sample CD. There are no uh, vocals. They can just. Um, grab and do their own track with it. It's just beats. So I think beats are like very basic and what, what people did like in the hip hop times for example with the MPC they just sampled the bass drum and the snares and the claps from other tracks. And that's just being honest, that's what I do. You know when I hear like an awesome bass drum I just like 
I cut it out and I adjusted. I put another one underneath and or put a little reverb on it to make it sound different. But like to have a good kick drum, it's so so important in the production. And why should I make my life that complicated? <laughs> you know? So I'm okay with samples. Did it ever happen to you that you were playing and it's just like that sounds familiar and somebody was using one of your loops? Yeah, 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 that happened. That happened already. And some people have been so nice getting in touch and sending the track and saying, look, we used this uh, percussion loop. Are you okay with that? So that was that happened two or three times already on Facebook and I find it really nice and I said, yeah, of course, it's cool. That's what the samples are for, you know? Yeah, you're not, you're not uh, sampling a melody or, you know, like, yeah. Emotional ideas, just uh, just beats. That's okay. Okay, so small break. We have the coffee here. Yeah. We continue. Okay. Okay. Please subscribe to our channels and check all the other things that we are doing. Yep, yeah, sounds fair. Bye. Ah, and if there's somebody that you want us to interview, please write us. And if you have their contact, it's even better. So, subscribe. Bye.